guys, it's Kyra and welcome back to my channel. So for today's video, I am excited because I will be doing the responding to your assumptions about me video. Now I have been seeing this kind of tag challenge, I don't know what it's considered, but I've been seeing it float around, you know, YouTube and I honestly have been enjoying watching them because it's always interesting to see what people assume about you, you know, from watching you or looking at your Instagram pictures. Like it's always interesting to see what people assume based off of what you present online. So yesterday on Instagram, I had asked you guys to send me your assumptions about me, like what you thought, you know, it could be anything regarding whatever. And I got quite a bit of responses, like I got quite a ton actually, so I probably won't get to all of them because I don't want the video to be too, too long. But just the ones that I do respond to, you guys should be able to get an idea of like, you know, who I am <laughs> and all that good stuff. Okay, so the first assumption is you're the quote, take no mess twin between you and Alicia. Okay, so just before I even answer that question, for those of you guys that do not know, I do have a twin sister. Yes, her name is Alicia. And Alicia and I actually are actually surprised at how many of you guys do not know that we are twins. It's, yes, so we're tw identical twins, you guys. And although she hasn't been here on my channel before, I've talked about her before in other videos. I've posted her before on my Instagram, so you guys should know by now. Just so you guys know, yes, I have a twin. Um, and for that assumption, the answer is yes, that is very true. Um, I, okay, so I would say... I wouldn't say Alicia takes mess because I don't think that's it at all. I just think that out of the two of us, I am the more direct, don't play with me type of person. Okay? Like, I don't, uh -uh. I, I don't, I don't play with people. They don't play with me. And we're cool. I don't, I don't have the time. I'm very, very direct. I know how I want things. I know how I want things done. I know how I want people to treat me. And I demand that, that treatment. Um, and if you can't treat me right, it's just, you got to go. I just don't have room for a bunch of BS. Like, I just don't, I don't accept it. I don't tolerate it. And that's just, it is what it is. Okay, the next one is you are a super loyal friend. That is definitely true. I am, I'm ride or die for my girls, y'all. Um, but I have, as I've gotten older, I have realized that I had a bunch of friends who weren't the same way towards me. And that's why over the past year, maybe two, I've actually kind of cut off. Not really cut off, but... I kind of let things dwindle naturally. Just friendships that I felt like weren't being reciprocated. Friendships that I felt like had served their purpose for that season. And um, like if we're like if we're good, if we're cool, I am loyal. I am. I, you can call me by anything. I will help you with anything. I'll support you with anything. That's just how I am. But if I also feel like you're not giving me the same in return, then we don't need to be friends. Like that's just it's such a truth. Like. If we can't, you know, give and take the both of us, then it's a no-no. Okay, the next one is, I assume that you are a really caring and genuine person. Thank you. That is definitely true. And I feel like you guys can kind of, I feel like these assumptions, it, it reassures me that I am portraying my true, authentic, genuine self to you guys. Because a lot of these are like, yep, that's true. That's true. Um, yes, I'm definitely a very caring and genuine person. I'm not, I can't do fakeness, period. Like, I just can't, I can't do it. I don't know what to say, but I just, I can't do fake people. I can't do fake situations. Like, if we naturally click, or if, or if I'm naturally attracted to your personality and like your vibe, we're cool. If something about you rubs me the wrong way, then I... I won't say it because I'm, I do genuinely care about people's feelings. Ask my husband. I, I have taught him how to care about others' feelings. So it's like I do care about how my actions and my words and things like that affect other people. And I want to spread love and positivity and just goodness throughout the world. Um, so I am very, very caring. But I'm also very genuine in, in the good and in the bad. So it's like if, if I'm not feeling you at all cool I'll still be cordial but I'm not gonna fake it like I want to be around you you know okay so the next assumption is you have a lisp I only hear it when you say now um no I don't have a lisp people have commented that okay y'all just to clarify whenever I say now I typically say now now to be clear I do know the difference between the word now and the word noun 
However, I just, whenever I just say it, I just naturally say the word now. I don't know why. It's just a habit. It's just something that me and my sister both do naturally, but we do know the difference. And because I say the word noun, that doesn't mean I have a lisp. It's just a really bad grammatical error of a habit. So no, I don't have a lisp. Okay, next one is you get along with your stepdaughter's mom. Um, that assumption is... I guess it's true. Her and I are cordial. We're not friends, just to be completely real. Like, we're not friends. I, I don't really feel, I don't really see why we would need to be friends. <laughs> but her and I are cordial. If you guys don't know, I do have a stepdaughter. She is 11 years old. She is just such a sweet, she's like the perfect stepdaughter I could ever ask for. Um, and my husband and her mom do have a good, healthy co parenting relationship. They get along fine. But again, they are not friends. I don't play that. I don't, I, I just don't foresee the need for my husband and her to be friends and or her and I to be friends. But we are cordial where like there's no drama, no bad blood, no nothing. It's just a hey, you know, how's it going? You know, how are things with Breland, etc, etc. Just keep it high level and keep it pushing. Okay, next assumption is you want to quit your day job and own your own successful company. That is a true kind of. So I say a true kind of because that's definitely a truth in the future. Um, but I have mentioned this before on my Instagram, also on my blog, that I actually am in no rush to quit my day job. I actually enjoy my job. Um, and I, I have a pretty flexible job as well. So I haven't reached that point yet to where I feel like my day job conflicts with my side hustles, which is why I'm in no rush to quit my job. I actually like stability. I like having a consistent check every two weeks. I like having health insurance. Like I like the benefits and also just the challenge of having a day job. Well, more so like what I do, like I'm in IT. So I love the challenge and, you know, the things that come with my job. Um, I do eventually want to quit maybe like, I don't know how long from now, but I don't work there forever, if that makes sense. And I know that, but I'm in no rush to quit now, if that makes sense. And I do want to own my own company. You guys know that I have a store now. I have my own personal brand, which a personal brand is a company, if you guys don't know. Um, so I do have multiple businesses now that I am trying to work on building to make that end goal happen. Okay, the next one is you are the best auntie to Val. And I think that's true. I mean, she can't talk yet, but I think that that is true. If you guys don't know, also, my twin sister Alicia does have um, a daughter. Um, and she is going on two years old. Going, two going on like ten. She is the sassiest little girl. And like, I just tease when I talk about her because she is just such a ray of sunshine like literally fills me up with joy and I'm getting emotional why am I getting emotional I don't know I'm about to cry stop Whew. I just love the little girl and I say I'm the best auntie because her and I just have a good old time and also my little sister as well she's a amazing aunt to that also so like she has two amazing aunties okay okay so the next assumption is that you are a clean freak the answer is absolutely yes if you guys don't know my vlogs and things like that, I hate mess. I hate clutter. I hate dirt. I hate junk. I hate just, I hate being disorganized. I have to be clean. I have to be organized. I have to have everything put away. Now, throughout the week, just because of like, you know, living day to day, it may get like a bit, my house is never messy, but it may be like stuff sitting around. But best believe that by the weekend, the house is back to normal. Like, I just can't do it. My bathrooms and stuff have to be clean. Like, I am a clean person. I am a true believer that cleanliness is next to godliness. So that's why I'm like, I, I just like to be clean, okay? Okay, next one is the assumption is that you're not at all pressed about having children. Um, the answer is true as of now. Um, I've mentioned this before plenty of times, you guys. I have no desire anytime soon to have kids. I actually went through a phase like last year where I didn't even know if I wanted to have kids and y'all mentioned that to my mom and my sister and they like almost lost it like they were like what no da, 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 da. um but now like I'm pretty sure I do like I, and I say pretty sure because I'm still not a hundred percent there yet but I'm pretty sure I do want to have at least one but just no time soon Dion and I actually have an idea of like when we think that 
think keyword think that will be ready but I don't want to say it or like mention it to you guys or even online just anywhere even if it's my sisters I don't know just because of the fact that I don't want to like get to a point where I feel pressured but as of now I am proactively avoiding having a child aka I'm birth control consistently I don't miss a day because I don't want to have kids right now there you go okay next assumption is I assume you get frustrated when plans fall through that is a true but I am actually working on that um for me that is a character flaw that I believe that I have the reason why is because like I don't just get frustrated I will literally just being completely transparent like I will <laughs> have a mini meltdown and it's it's not good it's not healthy and I know that that comes from my lack of patience which I've also mentioned that I'm working on this year as well is just having more patience and just letting things flow and go naturally I am a huge planner so I plan almost everything and like again, like if the plans don't go through, like I will freak out. And Dion is the complete opposite. He is a very, like he has taught me how to like woosa and how to breathe and just kind of roll with the punches. So I'm really, really, really working on improving that and not instantly going into panic mode, but more so going into, okay, like this is what we're dealing with right now. How do we fix it and move on? The assumption is that you're very bossy. I'd say it's a true or false depending on who you're talking to. Now, I mentioned before that I am very direct. I'm very, very direct. I'm very kind in the way I say things, but I am very direct. Now, I say that it depends on who you talk to because some people can take my directness as me being bossy or me being rude or me being aggressive. I talked about that in my in another my the Q and A video. So people may take that as me being bossy. I don't consider it being bossy. I consider it being direct. And again, it's just, it is. So like if you're intimidated by it, then you'll consider it bossy. But if you, if we're on the same page, you'll know it's just, it's just how I am. Okay, next assumption is that people think that you're stuck up slash bougie. And then she put in quotation marks. I don't think so at all. But it seems that happens to a Libra's. Oh, but it seems that happened to us Libra's a lot. Um, that actually is pretty common that's actually been like a common theme since like middle school high school that honestly I don't and I don't know why people assume that I'm stuck up or bougie I don't know if it's the way I dress the way I look the way I talk the way I act I don't quite know why that is however everyone that meets me especially people that meet me that have followed me online Everyone tells me that I am like, which I appreciate, but everyone says that, that they, that I am how they expected me to be via camera. Like they, people think that I'm really cool, really down to earth, that I'm really happy, really bubbly, like, and that's honestly how I am in person. So the assumption that people think that I'm stuck up and bougie is true, but then people meet me, they're like, oh, okay, like, you know, like you're really that way. Which I really appreciate because it means I'm I'm doing a good job of portraying who I am. So the assumption is true, but am I really stuck up and bougie? No. Okay, next assumption is to don't take your kindness for weakness because you will bust that A. That is absolutely true. Um, I mentioned before about the take no mess twin. Like I just, I'm very, very kind of mission. I'm very kind. I'm very caring. And I'm just a very positive person I'm a very happy person but again I don't play like I just don't play now the bust at a part is probably a false only because like I've never actually been in a fight y'all <laughs> so I won't be busting anybody like let's just be real I won't um but I can I will bust that a via words if that makes if it if it ever gets to that point I will gladly put you in your place and then move on okay the next assumption is I assume you are that blunt, no filter person in your family like me. I'd say in general that's true, but I'm gonna say that's false because the blunt, no filter person in my family and just referring to immediate family, like not Dion because Dion is 100% that person, but just in terms of my immediate family, that person is my little sister. Raina is like, <laughs> she is the bluntest of blunt. Um, she's actually worse than me when it comes to like directness and honesty and just like saying it like it is. So Raina is definitely that person. 
So I'd say in general, like I, I can be very blunt. Um, I do have a filter though. So that part really isn't true. But as far as in my family, it's not me, it's my little sister. Okay, the next assumption is, I think you are the fun twin. I'd say that's true, but at least it's fun too. So I don't really know if you can kind of like gauge our fun levels. <laughs> like I know that's a thing. Um, but I would say Alicia's really fun too. Like her and I have a good time together. Like we, you know, we have a good time overall. Um, but I will say though that I am the more try new things, do new things, get out of routine, just have a more versatile social life if that makes sense so like I love going to events I love trying new things with my husband like I love going you know to dinner with my girls like I love changing it up I just love having fun and having a good time and just living my life because I feel like life is too short to like not have fun so I guess in talking it out I'd say that yes that is true the two of us I'd say I'm probably the more fun try new things have a good time kind of twin okay the next one is you want to be a mom at some point but you're also really scared to be a mom. Oh my gosh, how'd you know? Okay, so as I'm mentioning, yes, I do think I eventually wanna be a mom, not anytime soon, but I do eventually want to. However, it is 100% true that I actually am not afraid, but I actually have a fear of my parenting, if that makes sense. Like for me, I think it's just, I think for me it's just like, it's the idea that I will have someone who will rely 100% on me for their well-being literally freaks me out like to the point to where it gives me anxiety and I that kind of makes me not want to have a kid because I'm just afraid of like just even bringing a kid into this world because y'all know the world we live in is crazy like will I you know be a good teacher will I be a good role model will I just all those things that women think of runs through my mind all the time so I will admit that I am actually afraid or not really afraid but scared of being uh, more so of how I'll be as a mom this is from Adesha I already know who this is from she said that you're so the assumption is that you're so popping that you would never be interested in being a creative mentor to me <laughs> girl stop the answer is well the assumption is no that I'm not too popping to be a mentor to anybody like that's not it at all being a mentor is just like being a mom it gives me anxiety because it's like I have a little bit of being honest I have a little bit of um imposter syndrome because I feel like I don't know a whole lot I feel like I don't really know much at all and like in my head I'm like why would anyone want to listen to me or like follow what I have to say or like you know take my advice and use it like I just like it's just that fear of like I don't really have much to offer it's not that I am too pop and everything because at least you know me you know that's not true but um it's more so overcoming the fear of not being a good mentor or like not sharing valuable information okay so next assumption is that you are fancy no the thing is that i like nice things don't get me wrong i do like nice things i like to look nice i just like a certain standard of living and a certain standard of things in general However, I would not consider myself fancy because I don't like fancy stuff, if that makes sense. Like, fancy stuff to me is like really bougie meals and like going to like fancy restaurants or like, you know, having like super fancy elaborate dates and like having a super fancy house and a super fancy car. That is not me at all. Um, I'm actually very simple. Um, anyone who knows me knows that I do not like, I actually hate fancy food. Hate fancy food. Like if you can give me some fried chicken, some macaroni and cheese, and some yams, or some pizza and a burger, that is literally the key to my heart. That's all I want. Um, fancy dates. My fan my definition of a good date is Dion saying, hey, do you want to go get Froyo tonight? And that makes me happy. Like, I'm very, very simple in that sense, so I would say that I am a fancy person, but I do like nice things next assumption is that you're moving back to Houston soon the answer is hope uh well the assumption is that I don't know <laughs> hopefully it'll be true by the end of the year but we will see but ideally I do want to move back to Houston okay so the next assumption is that you're high maintenance um I just answered that about the fact that I like nice things but I'm actually not fancy or honestly 
high maintenance at all. I'm very, very simple. Like, I can get dressed if I really want to get dressed in, like, five minutes, throw on some sweatpants. You know, like, I'm not, uh, you know, like, I don't have to be dressed to the T all the time. I wear no makeup most of the time. Um, I'm just very, like, I can be low-key when I want to be, and I feel like that makes me not high maintenance. Okay, the next assumption is that you're hardworking and strive for success and everything. Um, that is definitely true. I am I actually have a very, very, very strong worth ethic, and I attribute that to my parents just from, like, as a child, it's like kind of things they taught us. As far as me and my sisters, they did an excellent job as far as making us value education with, you know, being hard workers, you know, for working for what we want. And even now, as an adult, I still try to work even harder and harder every day. And I do strive for success in everything because I feel like, like, I can't do mediocre. Does that make sense? Like, I can't just be okay with just here. I just can't. I'm always striving for more. And I'm sure you guys can kind of tell, you know, via my chit chat already with me and my Instagram post. I always am striving and working for more. And I had mentioned in my last um, chit chat already with me that I feel like goals are so important because if you don't have a goal or something to work towards, it's like there's not really, in my opinion, much of a point in living because you're kind of just floating day to day without working towards something. So I'm always working towards something else and striving to do my best. And whatever that is okay the next assumption is you're quite a shy person because you still can't look at the camera when speaking to us I don't quite know why you said that I feel like naturally I do glance away when I'm talking to the camera just because it's kind of a bit awkward just talking spitting out some words just looking straight at a camera um, but I'm not shy at all actually I'm not I no, I don't think I ever was really shy I'm not shy at all, honestly, so that's a, definitely a false assumption. Okay, the next one is a kind of a coming off guard. This assumption is, just stick with it, y'all. The assumption is that you don't like gay people because of how you were raised. And then in parentheses it says, it isn't meant to be me. Which I don't take that as an insult at all because I get what she was saying. So you guys know I am a Christian. I was raised in a Christian household. Um, and I do have very religious beliefs. However... That is completely false. Completely false. And I feel like that's a common misconception with Christians as a whole. Now, just being real, I do know that there are people who claim to be Christians that um, have ill feelings towards people of different sexualities. I am not one of them. I truly believe that people can agree to disagree and people can also have different points of views on certain things and still be treated with the utmost kindness and respect and be treated like a human being at the end of the day it does not affect me at all and that's my thing is like what someone else is doing in their life does not affect me at all so if it doesn't affect me then why would I treat them any less of a person or be mean to them because it has nothing to do with me it's like that's their life that's their preference that's what they want to do so cool like why would I judge or crucify someone I'm not God so it's like at the end of the day it's like what you do with your which again what you do with your personal life or it's like it doesn't really affect me at all next up the assumption is your family is well off um that assumption is I guess it depends on your definition of well off um I did come from a middle class family my dad is an engineer he's a pipeline engineer so he actually draws pipelines for petrochemical companies, which is really cool. And my mom is an educator. Um, she was a teacher for, I don't know how long, and then just recently within the past like two or three years, she switched over from the classroom to be a diagnostician, that's a tricky word, a diagnostician um, for schools, like for school districts. I would say that I wasn't, like we weren't rich or anything, like don't get it twisted, we weren't rich. But my family, um, let's just say I never went without. We always had what we wanted and what we needed. Um, and we did, we did live a good life. Does that make sense? But we aren't rich. I guess it depends on your definition of well off. Okay, so the next assumption is your husband is really your best friend. That is 100% true. You guys know my husband is literally my bestest friend. And I say that because my husband is the only person in the world that I feel like I can be a thousand percent myself and by that I mean I can say the corny the corny jokes I can do the corny dances I can you know cry at random commercials and movies 
I can be vulnerable with him in ways I cannot be vulnerable with anyone else. Like, we're just connected in the best of ways. And he's truly my best friend. Like, my bestest friend. Now, I do have others that I consider my best friends. Like, my sister's my best friends. I have a couple actual best friends. So, you guys get it. Like, I have best girlfriends. But my husband is, like, my bestest, bestest. My BFF for life. Next up is... Family is really important to you. Um, that is very true. I've mentioned before about how much I love my husband, my family. Like, family time is everything to me. And I think the older I get, the more and more I want to spend time with my family and be around my family. So that is definitely true. Okay, next assumption is that when you argue, you speak so fast that translation is needed. That's actually true. Um, I do talk extremely fast, if you guys don't know. Um, I actually do have a stuttering speech impediment. You probably can't tell because I do edit the videos, but it's, it can't, especially when I'm excited or I'm really upset, like those two extremes, it starts to go all the place. But I can subconsciously turn it on and off depending on the setting. So like if I was speaking in public or speaking at work, I can instantly turn it off without me knowing about it. So whenever I'm really upset or really excited, my mouth goes 100 miles an hour. Um, my husband understands me, so he gets it. My family understands me as well, so they get it, and that's really all I care about. But this year, I am actually actively trying to work on my speech because I want to slow down the way I, you know, how I talk. Okay, next one is that you are a carefree person and you don't allow outside events to really stress you out. Um, that is a, a false because that conflicts what I said earlier about <laughs> me uh, freaking out whenever things don't go to plan. So that is false. Um, I do get stressed out when things don't pan out. So false. Assumption is you seem real cool, down to earth, adventurous, or spontaneous. That is definitely true. I mentioned about you know being the fun twin and like just wanting to do, try new things. So that's true. My assumption is that you strive for perfection. That is true. And again, I'm working on. I'm working on going with the flow and like not being so much a perfectionist, but just striving for my best. That's kind of where I struggle with a bit because it's like I want things to be perfect. And if they're not perfect, I'm like, nope. But I'm trying to to strive to be the best and do the best that I can without focusing on it being perfect, if that makes sense. Assumption is that you really are an introvert. That is false. I'm not an introvert at all. However... I am a, whenever I'm meeting new people, I will kind of be a bit, res I'm not introverted, but I'll be a bit, bit reserved and I more so observe, you know, who I'm with and what they're doing, et cetera, et cetera. And then based on my observations, that kind of gauges the Kyra you get. So you'll either get the normal, crazy, fun, happy Kyra, or if I'm not quite feeling it, or if I'm not quite comfortable, then you'll get more of the reserve, kind of just like cordial, chime in here and there, keep to myself, kind of Kyra. Makes sense? The last one, which is, I, I guess it's kind of an interesting one to end on. What are your real, no, well, the question was, what are your real thoughts about your ex-brother-in-law? And then the next one she said is, sorry, my first one wasn't an assumption. So my assumption is you hate your ex-brother-in-law. That assumption is false. Hate is a very strong word. And I don't really hate anyone. So, and also when you hate someone, like you, that means that you're investing too much energy and effort into really disliking them. So I wouldn't use the term hate. So that's definitely not the word that I use to describe my feelings towards him. Um, and if you guys don't know what I'm talking about, then just completely ignore this question. If you do, then, you know, you'll get it. And you know, I'm learning, I, I'm learning to let my feelings go. <laughs> I'm working, there you go, I'm working on them, okay? So my feelings are, I don't quite know, like, so it's not hate, because hate is just, that's too much energy into, into something, into someone that I really don't really care much for. To be honest, it's it's been really hard, because it's been really hard to see someone that you love go through something like this. It's really hard when you see someone that you thought that you knew and that you really loved and cared for treat someone that you really, really, really love, like your own flesh and blood. In a certain way um so it it's hard so no i don't hate him but 
I'm not the fondest of him. That is it for the assumptions about me. Um, all these guys shared. There were quite a bit. Hopefully the video isn't too, too long. But I thought you guys get a better idea as far as like who I am, what I'm about, what I care about, all that good stuff through these questions or through these assumptions. So hope you guys enjoyed this video. And if you guys did, give it a thumbs up. And also subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. And I will catch you guys in my next video. Bye, guys.